Through majestic forests, alpine valleys and crystal clear lakes, following the trails of wild animals in search of rare birds in places where no man had set a foot before. Precious, magnificent nature in all its diversity and grandeur in the documentary series Kazakhstan's Wildlife Sanctuaries. Nature has created an astonishingly beautiful sanctuary in the mountain spurs of the western Tinshan. Here, clean mountain air is filled with fragrant smell of juniper, narrow picturesque valley laced with turbulent rivers, beautiful waterfalls, inaccessible gorges with their wild inhabitants. This is Aksuja Bagli, the oldest sanctuary of Kazakhstan. This year, it celebrates its 19th anniversary. Its first director was a pioneer and enthusiastic of research of the nature of southern Kazakhstan, Boris Trizna. Back in 1925, a year before the formation of the reserve, he began a research on the nature of the western Tianshan. Primordial nature of the mountain valleys of the rivers Aksu and Jabagli required protection from harmful human intervention. It took many years for nature of the reserve to restore its lost riches. Things that were recovered include previously cut down juniper forests, meadows that were ruined by grazing cattle. Population of wild Siberian mountain goats recovered as well. Throughout its existence, the Aksuja Bagli had become a real research laboratory. In 2015, the National Nature Reserve received a special international status. It was included in the UNESCO list of the International Network of Biosphere Reserves. This significant event took place in Paris at the 27th session of the International Coordinating Council of UNESCO program Man and Biosphere. Famous scientists from Russia and Europe had visited the celebration in Shimken, dedicated to the 19th anniversary of Aksuja Bagli. One of them was a French scholar and documentary filmmaker, the president of Alma Association, Catherine Pex. It is thanks to her that the wild Severus apple tree has been recognized in the West. The existence of this tree on the slopes of the Tian Shan dates back to the time of dinosaurs. Severus apple tree is the ancestor of modern apples. According to Catherine Pax, the nature of southern Kazakhstan is fraught with many unsolved puzzles for biologists, geneticists and researchers of nature. Aksuja Bagli Nature Reserve is recognized by scientists of the world as the nature standard of the Western Tianshan. This place is perfect for those seeking to learn more about the life of mountain forests who wishes to enjoy his own time by himself to listen to the sounds of pristine nature. Many French people visit Central Asia. Historically, they are better acquainted with Uzbekistan, therefore visit it more frequently. These days, considering you are putting efforts into promoting tourism in your reserve, we would wish to see tourists not only from France, but from Italy, Germany as well, visiting the reserve, learning more about the origins of apple genetics. We decided to find out what might interest tourists in Aksuja Bagli. We began at the visitor center of the reserve. This is one of the most original contemporary expositions of Kazakhstan's nature. A few years ago, it was thought that reserve and tourists are two incompatible concepts. Today, protected areas are open for ecotourism, sightseeing tours through the unique landscape of nature of Kazakhstan. In the visitor center, experienced guides inform about the diversity of the fauna and flora of the western Tianshan. Scenic exposition ribbons of time take travelers back to the distant past. Remains of dinosaurs, pterosaurs, turtles, insects and ancient fish were found on the territory of the reserve. Natural museum was forming throughout the existence of the reserve and therefore has a lot of showpieces. 
You can learn about the structure of glaciers, how underground caves were formed, have a rest by the tree of life, perennial juniper tree, listen to the birds singing. There are many interesting exhibits in a museum, but we are looking forward to getting on mountain trails leading into the Kshikhaindi Gorge. This is the habitat of the Siberian ibex in southern Kazakhstan. Approaching the Tenshan Mountains from the north, one may observe the gradual rise of grandiose peaks and ridges wall above the horizon. The highest point, the Sairam Peak, is as high as 4,238 meters. People call this mountain Aktuyeulgen. Its shape actually resembles the body of a breathless camel. The trail to nearby mountains goes up so sharply that you can see not just the snow-capped mountain peaks, but glaciers with their steep slopes as well. Our guide is one of the leading researchers of the reserve, Smatula Jumanov. We are passing the gorge on a horseback. Roads are rocky, mountain trails are very steep. Our guide's attention is drawn to broken bush branches and flip stones. These are the traces of one of the largest inhabitants of the reserve. The brown Tianshan bear had passed through here. You see what he had done? Flipped all stones. He probably was looking for some tasty roots. Look, how strong is this beast? What a tremendous power he possesses. During the 40s of the last century, bear population was under the threat of extinction as a result of an intensive hunting for animals. But in recent years, thanks to conservation measures, the population of bear in Aksuja Bagli Reserve began to spread again. Here is another trace of its presence, broken branches of Sivas apple tree. Apples are a favorite treat of brown bear. Bears are real gourmets and have a sweet tooth. Therefore, these large, juicy, fragrant fruits invite their attention. In order to get apples, Bear climbed to the crown of the tree, breaking off branches as he does so. Scientists jokingly call bears first breeders of apple. By eating the best fruits, they unwittingly created whole forests of apple trees with large and sweet fruits. The seeds grow very well through the bear compost. But sometimes, bears are causing trouble to the staff of the reserve. For instance, on some occasions, they might destroy camera traps. We set a camera trap on these rocks. Just recently, we've discovered that the camera is completely wrecked. The bear threw it three meters away from the place it was initially installed. We went to the center to check the records. There was footage of the snow leopard, raw deer, and the last shot, Tianshan brown bear. The thing is that camera kept some of the man's smell. Bears have very sensitive sense of smell, and this is why he attacked the camera. We climbed up 1,600 meters above sea level high. An old construction, a cordon, which was built in 1933, is located here, in the Kshikhaindi Valley. This is the house where a pioneer of nature conservation of southern Kazakhstan, Boris Trizna, lived and worked. The staff of the reserve maintains this historical place in proper condition. Walls are whitewashed, Wood is stacked and even stove seems warm in this cozy house. Foresters claim that two logs are enough to warm up travelers. This house has a special aura. It's perfect for having a rest, to contemplate, meditate in silence. It has its own historical memory, its own place in history. We arrived at cordon of Kshikhaindi when it began to get dark. We had to think about accommodation. We spent the night in the similar cozy cordon as Trizna's house. Hot fire was burning in a real Russian fireplace. Outside, the wind was howling. It was the start of the storm. And we were basked in the warmth of the house with a hot cup of tea. By the morning, the mountains were covered with snow. A thick milky mist was sprawling down the mountain slopes. We settled our horses and headed to the Baidaksai tract. 
This place is inhabited by deer, argali, roe deer, and tau teke, mountain goats. The name of the gorge is representative of its location. By Daksai means bachelor, lonely, meaning it is located away from other natural objects. Our path led from mountain streams through the thick veil of fog. At times it was snowing, and we were not expecting to meet Tau Teke, but we got lucky. The weather here is constantly changing. In half an hour the fog cleared and revealed a small herd of mountain goats before us. The male and several females moved without any haste. They didn't notice our presence. Soon the mist, impeding from the above, hid them from our sight. The director of the reserve had told us that hoof mammals walk long way through the passages and places where ranges of the Western Tenshan connect. These are the spurs of the Talasalatau, Alatau, and Karatau ridges. These are the areas where our reserve and reserve of Karatau border with each other. This is where the number of animals had increased. It is very good. These trails are safe for animals to pass in autumn, when the snow falls. There is a plan for southern Kazakhstan in cooperation with the UN Development Program, UNDP, to create an ecological corridor. This corridor is necessary for animals to move freely in their paths. Main rivers of the reserve are Aksu and Jabagli. The reserve was named in their honor. A strikingly beautiful canyon Aksu had formed at the confluence of the small and big Aksu rivers. The reserve contains 23 small lakes. In western Tianshan, the ponds are usually not larger than a few dozens of square meters area. They are formed on the moraine near the glaciers, as well as in places where rivers are subject to avalanches and landslides. Such lakes are Kazilzhar, Kizilgankol and Ainakol. There is a beautiful legend involving Kizilgan Lake. Our ancestors had lived here in ancient times. They raised cattle, their sheep grazed on Jailau. Among the shepherds there was a young man who fell in love with the daughter of the Bai. A pure love was born between the young people. When they came of age, they decided to unite their destinies. However, the boy was against their love. Soon after, the young man died. Desperate young woman threw herself into the lake. In honor of Romeo and Juliet of the steppe, people named the lake Kizulgen. We were not able to see the lake due to the inclement weather, but we remember what we have seen the previous summer here. We visited the lake back then and were able to admire its unique beauty. Aksuja Bagli is the richest treasury of rare and endemic plant species. During the spring, you can enjoy the blooming of fragrant bird cherry tree, Tian Shan honeysuckle and wild apple. The Turkestan hawthorn also blooms at the time of the year. Kaufman tulips are stretching to the sun on the glades and meadows. There are over 1,300 species of high plants. 41 of them are red-listed species. There are three types of junipers here, Turkestan, Zerofshan, and Hemispherical. The most common species for Aksuja Bagli Reserve is the tall juniper. In the evolutionary development, a strong base allowed juniper to grow in the form of a tree, to grow not only in breadth but also in height. In subalpine and alpine zone, a creeping juniper is more widespread. Archa plays an important role in the ecosystem of the reserve. The thithon sites produced by the juniper fill the atmosphere and have positive health effects. This is why the Aksuja Bagli Nature Reserve is called a place of salubrious mountain air.
Many tourists visit us during summers, including international tourists, up to a thousand a year. We try to provide them with all necessary conditions and services, transport, organized hiking and horse riding along mountain trails. There are 30 horses in the reserve assigned for horseback trekking. In any weather, be it winter or summer, you can go riding through places where no man has gone before. Watch birds and beasts, feel yourself a part of a nature. Most importantly, to see the results of many years of research of academicians and reserve staff, all dedicated to create the unique natural environmental zone. <laughs>